on Larry King Now, we're tackling gun control. Why more Americans are now saying gun rights take precedence over gun control. I'm not surprised because I think that there's a campaign of misinformation about guns making you more safe. And I think when people realize that that's not true, the polls will shift back. Will the NRA show any leniency towards universal background checks? The NRA worked with uh, all the, the legislators after Virginia Tech to pass the NICS, the National Instant Check System Improvement Act, to improve the background checks. But background checks as a backdoor to a, to a way to register firearms and then tax their purchase, that's what's happening in California. We don't support that. Plus, we have about 320 million guns in America, and they're really not going anywhere. Uh, the gun owners feel very, very seriously, uh, uh, very, very intimately with their guns, and they're not going to give them up uh, for uh, gun control purposes. All next on Larry King Now. A recent Pew Research poll shows that for the first time since the tragedy at Sandy Hook Elementary School, the majority of Americans say gun rights are more important than gun control. Today, we're joined by a panel of experts and activists to discuss this study and more surrounding the often hotly debated topic of gun control. Margot Bennett is the executive director of Women Against Gun Violence, C.D. Chuck Michelle is the 2013 National Gun Rights Defender of the Year. He serves as the West Coast Counsel for the National Rifle Association. And via Skype is Adam Winkler, professor of constitutional law at UCLA and the author of a great book, Gunfight, The Battle Over the Right to Bear Arms in America. Margot, are you surprised that now Americans, the percentage is 52 to 48, say gun rights are more important than gun control? I'm not surprised because I think that there's a campaign of misinformation about guns making you more safe. And I think when people realize that that's not true, the polls will shift back. Why do you think Sandy Hook went away so quick? I don't know. I have to be honest with you. It's surprising to me. I think people maybe need to be personally affected. Chuck? Well, I think there's three reasons that the, that the public opinion has shifted. First is people have come to realize that guns do work to protect against crime. Second is the Supreme Court has come out and said that the Second Amendment is a fundamental individual right, and people, Americans, have come to appreciate that freedom, just like they appreciate the other nine amendments to the Bill of Rights. And the third is that the, the, the things that the gun ban lobby warned us about that were going to cause crime to increase, in the 70s they said, if we didn't ban handguns, crime would soar. And the, after that, they said, if we allowed people to get licenses to carry guns in public, crime would soar. Then they said, if we didn't ban semi-automatic rifles, crime would soar. Well, since then, the number of handguns has tripled in, our, in private hands. Uh, the right to carry a firearm in public has been enacted in 42 states. And there are now 7, 8 million AR-15s in private hands, it's become one of the most private, uh, popular firearms in the country. Is there any law def defining a t protection of people against guns that the NRA favors, like, for example, universal checking? Is there any law you favor? Well, the NRA has, has often worked with legislators to pass laws that will actually do something to, to prohibit violent crime. In California, the reason our gun violence rate is going down is because of things like three, three strikes, 1020 life. I mean, criminal control laws work. Gun control laws typically don't. They're based on a false premise that somehow if you pass a law, the bad guys won't be able to get guns. All that really happens, especially in California, is people become accidental felons because the law becomes so complicated they don't know what's legal and what's not. So when Sandy Hook happens, does the NRA feel bad? You know, I mean, well, I mean, the NRA. Every that wasn't a criminal at Sandy Hook. That was a no, kid. That was a crazy kid. Yeah. Okay. Uh, a very unfortunate How did he situation. Get a gun? Uh, he took it from his mother. I guess his mother thought it was some kind, somehow therapeutic. And to, but before we leave that topic of the NRA, does the NRA feel bad? We're, the NRA is filled with loving parents. I mean, I have two boys of my own. It tore the hearts out of every member of the NRA, every board member of the NRA, every executive at the NRA. It's not something that they just gloss over. 
Uh, so, I'm, you know, speaking as a former prosecutor, as a parent, it's certainly something that, that, that concerns me greatly and that I feel terrible about. Adam, this debate goes on and on. First, can you define for me in the Second Amendment what the word arms means? Well, it remains to be seen a little bit. Um, the founders obviously referring to weapons that you could use for self-defense or for defense of the nation, uh, something maybe appropriate for militia service or otherwise. The Supreme Court has said that the arms that are protected by the Second Amendment are those weapons that are commonly used for self-defense. Uh, they said that in the context of a ban on handguns, clearly indicating that a handgun is an arm, uh, but it, an arm is also something that must be commonly used for self-defense. So something like a, a nuclear bomb or a shoulder-fired missile would not be uh, an arm under the meaning of the Second Amendment. Are there any that's kind of simply hurt the divide, like an AK-47? Is that a commonly used arm? Well, this is an issue that's being litigated in federal courts all over the country right now, Larry, and it's a big controversial issue. There have been some places that have banned uh, so-called assault rifles, uh, and courts are trying to figure out whether those are weapons that are in common use. One argument is that they are in common use, as Chuck Michel just recently said. There's a lot of these AR-15s and their variants that have been sold over the last few years. On the other hand, one might easily say that they're very rarely used for self-defense to the extent that the Second Amendment is really about protecting a right of self-defense, it's hard to see why an AR-15 would be protected under the Second Amendment. But like I say, it's an issue that divides the courts today. And Margot, does it divide you? No. <laughs> no, it does not. You um, would ban all weapons? All no, no, we're definitely not an organization that wants to ban guns. Um, we want sensible gun legislation. And when you speak of how you know, NRA members are loving parents, you're a loving parent. I absolutely believe that. But then I don't understand why the NRA f um, continues to fight child access prevention laws, cap laws, which reduce unintentional shootings. Just last week, I could count 10 children that were killed unintentionally by guns left loaded and unlocked in the homes of their parents. Why would you fight cap laws? Because f home safety, firearm safety in the home depends on a variety of factors and trying to force a one-size-fits-all uh, safety program down the throats of people who that type of program is inappropriate for is going who to cost lives, not for? someone with no children in their home or so someone why, why who, who, who has older children because they, it, this was actually very well illustrated by Justice Scalia and Justice Roberts at the oral argument at Heller. They talked about, okay, if my handgun is locked in my gun safe, now I hear someone coming in through the window at 3 o'clock in the morning. Now I have to turn the light on, find my reading glasses, fumble around to open up the, the gun safe to get the gun out to protect myself or my family. It's, it depends on the individual circumstances. Trying to say that this one-size-fits-all gun safe or one-size-fits-all trigger lock or whatever it is is the answer and the panacea just makes the home more dangerous because a lot of those things can be defeated. Do we have statistics as to how many Americans last night shot someone invading their home? No. I would guess none. The, the reason, well, but you're asking the wrong question. What you're trying to get to is what's the deterrent value? What is the crime-fighting value of a firearm? And in 99 times out of 100, the firearm's never fired. You don't shoot someone in your home. You just say, get out of here. I've called the police, and if you come any further, I'm, I'm going to shoot you. you think That's that the deterrent effect. Can... There's 14 separate studies that say that happens up to 2 million times a year, far more yeah. often than, than firearms are actually misused to commit a violent crime. You agree with that? No, absolutely not. There's statistics that show 2 million people last year Absolutely want people not. to get out of their house. The, the, the statistics vary depending on the, how those questions are asked, but they're always more than the number of times that the gun is misused to commit a crime. The bottom line is guns have social utility. As an as a overall equation, they save more lives than they take. When we come back, are we getting the full story? How the media has influenced the debate surrounding gun control? Don't go away. Chuck, when I've interviewed police chiefs, they all favor gun control. The rank and file don't. Uh, well, the chiefs do. I've had but the National Federation of Chiefs of Police, and they say it's more of a problem to have a gun in your house than not. 
Right. And most That's... guns used in the house are a husband killing a wife, a drunk killing a cousin, and it's 80% of alcohol is involved in gun use. I think some of those last statistics are, statistics are probably accurate. Uh, first of all, though, understand the, the, the chiefs of police in most, especially the big city departments, have, have become politicians. And so they will say what the prevailing political wind tells them to, to say in that city. The rank and file folks understand that the, the right to keep and bear arms is a, a valuable individual right that they're not afraid of having be people being able to exercise. Adam, do you have a position on this? Oh, well, I think that we should have a, we do have a right to bear arms in the Constitution, but at the same time, we can have reasonable gun control. I think that the gun debate has really forced us to sort of choose sides, either you're pro-gun or you're anti-gun. I think we need to find a middle road. I think we need to find a way to recognize that people do have a right to have guns in their homes for personal protection, but that doesn't mean we can't have good laws in place to stop the criminals and the mentally ill from getting their hands on guns. I think we should have better gun control laws than we currently have. We should probably rethink some of the gun control laws that we have on the books that don't work and don't actually reduce violence. Uh, but I think the key is to look at this thing, uh, look at this issue with a clear head, to get as much data as we can, and make informed judgments, not on the basis of just ideology, but on this, uh, on uh, the, with the goal of public safety in mind. Chuck, do you support background checks? Well, the NRA worked with the, all the, the legislators after Virginia Tech to pass the NICS, the National Instant Check System Improvement Act, to improve the background checks. But background checks as a backdoor to a, to a way to register firearms and then tax their purchase, that's what's happening in California. We don't support that. And we don't support what they did in Washington, where the gun ban lobby got its got its wish and said that any gun transfer, and even if ownership doesn't transfer, there has to be a background check. Well, now museums can't hold historical displays. Firearm safety instructors can't hold hands-on firearm safety because just handing the gun to someone else becomes a crime. So it, it's a backdoor way to, to, get, to pass and, and advance another agenda that has really nothing to do. Criminals don't get their guns from gun stores. They don't go through background checks. Right, but they do get them from people that buy them legally and then transfer them to them. Which is already a crime. So, but it's happening. I, it's disingenuous, really, to think that the NRA supports background checks and disingenuous for them to fight any kind of registry because you know the one organization that does have a registry of almost every gun purchased where it is who owns it what the address is the NRA what do you they get, have that why does it bother you to have a back why does none it, of the NRA it, members are saying what guns they own that's uh, that's no, very very a, private it's a, information it's a membership organization every time you buy a gun you can get a free membership to the NRA you go to the shooting range that's you only get a the free, dealers that work with us I wish they all membership, would but I'm just saying the most accurate list of who owns a gun the NRA well, well, I, I don't you, know that do everybody you, who owns the NRA uh, joins do you the NRA suspect owns a gun. that the the government is out to take all the guns away. Is that the NRA's? What do you? Why do you fear of these kind of well, registration the has led to confiscation in California, in New York, in Australia, and of in of rifles. People registered their firearms, and then uh, uh, under Dan Lundgren, and then Bill Lockyer came in, said those registrations are invalid, and I'm taking all those guns away from you. It was only an NRA lawsuit that stopped them from going door to door to confiscate them, and said they were given the option of turning them in or taking them out of so the state. So you support rifles for hunting, right? It's not home protection. Multiple. It depends on your home. Uh, sometimes, the, typically, the handgun is the best. Uh, a firearm for home defense, but a shotgun might be more appropriate, a rifle might be more appropriate. You know, inner city, which we're kind of used to thinking in those terms, a handgun is probably going to be better, but in, a, in the country, a rifle could be a much better choice. It's all a tactical decision, and that's one of the things that NRA does. It trains people to make those choices depending on their needs, because it all has to be individualized. You can't do a one-size-fits, you can't say rifles aren't appropriate for self-defense, because often they are. A pop-up gun shop in New York City recently made news. Our panelists will weigh in on the effectiveness of this effort to spread gun safety awareness. Plus, we're discussing assault weapons. Do they have a place in American society at all? Don't click away. We're back with our outstanding panel discussing guns in America. Margo, in New York City, a gun sale pop-up gun shop used to promote sticker gun safety awareness recently made headlines. 
Do you know what that is? Yes, I absolutely uh, do. It? Well, we're a member of States United to Prevent Gun Violence, and uh, they did an exhibit in an art gallery that mimicked a gun shop for first-time gun buyers. And when potential buyers came in uh, and were shown specific guns, they were also told the history of the gun, which gun was used by Adam Lanza when he killed 20 people. And other guns. Uh, the gun, I believe, that the toddler used, he pulled out of his mother's purse at a Walmart and shot her and killed her. Uh, so it causes people to think. All it's right. about do guns make you safer? We say no. The NRA said the following about pop-ups. It's appalling that the gun control lobby exploits tragedy to further a political agenda. The video reveals their true agenda, which is to ban guns. You think that's what their agenda is? Well, they were certainly trying to talk people out of buying them by making an emotional plea, which is sort of the model. But you can't take one gun and say, by the way, these weren't the actual guns. These were replicas right. or props. But the, the, a particular model gun, every, every gun at some point in time has probably, every model gun has probably been misused by violent felons to commit some kind of a crime. But how about all the millions of times that that model gun has been used to save a life? I mean, th that's ignored. And again, the question becomes, is it used more often, misused by violent criminals, or is it used to save so life? So do you agree with Adam there has to be some sort of balance here? Well, I mean, you don't you want decide... everybody to go in and buy a gun and just use it. No, that's no a very right that's now. a very personal decision whether or not you're ready, willing, and able to buy a gun for sport or for hunting or for self defense. And being ready to defend yourself is another big decision that you have to make for your own. You know, uh, uh, do you have the what it takes to use that gun if it gets right down to it? Uh, so a gun is not for everybody. This is not that's not the position. Well, we're this is are we uh, Adam? I think we're right. Are we the most gun use in the world? Americans. Well, we certainly have more guns in our civilian population than any other uh, industrialized country. Uh, and we also have very high rates of gun violence. Um, I don't think that's going to change or go away anytime soon, Larry. We have about 320 million guns in America, and they're really not going anywhere. Uh, the gun owners feel very, very seriously, uh, uh, very, very intimately with their guns, and they're not going to give them up uh, for uh, gun control purposes. And so I think the, to the extent that we have guns here in America and that they're commonly used both for criminal activity and for self-defense, that dynamic is not going to change anytime soon. Funny, when you look at a society, I interviewed the head of Scotland Yard once, and he could not believe that Americans own guns. It was beyond his comprehension that you could have a gun. How do you explain that? We, we developed from the British society. Yeah, but we learned from their mistakes. <laughs> the founding fathers realized that they this was They don't have a... gun deaths like we do. Well, but consider that. Our gun deaths really are gang and drug related. If you took the inner city gang gun violence out of the equation, our, our gun death rate on a pro rata basis is about the same as most European countries. So we don't really have a gun violence problem as much as we have a gang and drug related gun violence problem. It's really spiked in those inner, inner city areas, which usually, ironically, have the strongest gun control laws like Chicago and Los Angeles. Margo, how do you... Well, I disagree. And let's face it, we're not surrounded by moats. And Chicago isn't surrounded by a moat. And Los Angeles isn't surrounded by a moat. And so people bring guns in from elsewhere. I do want to address that you think that um, gun safety advocates uh, use maybe emotionalism, like for example at the pop-up gun store that we were telling the stories, um, so that it creates a certain emotionalism about the purchase of a gun. We're sharing the facts. I don't see how you could present that argument when gun sales are based on fear. Fear of people breaking into your home, fear of crime, fear of attack. I mean, we're not promoting fear. We just want people to know that guns don't make you safer. Well, now, you can counter that argument, but I think that we could probably sit side by side for a great deal of time, and I could give you the name of somebody who was killed by a gun wrongly, and 
I think you would ultimately run out of the names of people who had been saved. Well, you don't need to give me the names. I mean, I've worked as a prosecutor. I've held the hands of victims in courtrooms all across Los Angeles County. I certainly am intimately familiar with the victims of, and the families of victims of gun violence. But that experience taught me that gun laws don't work. We can, we can surround ourselves with wishful thinking, thinking that the, the criminals are going to obey the law and somehow we can prevent violence by, by banning guns. But aren't most guns killing uh, done by non-criminals in the home? If a gun is shot in a home, it's probably a kid killing someone, a, a drunk killing someone, right? How many Americans die by a result of a crime in their home shooting a criminal? I'm not sure I followed well, you. Well, I mean, but... most gun deaths in America, right, most are alcohol-related. I don't know if that's safe to say. I mean, you, you mean accidental gun deaths? Accidental gun deaths. As opposed to protecting or, yourself or, from or, a criminal, or an act or a of criminal violence, committing murder? An act of passion against someone you see with your wife. Domestic that... violence is definitely a problem, but there's already laws taking guns away from anyone who's even suspected of domestic violence or has any kind of a domestic violence conviction. Uh, so those laws aren't working if that's still happening. Well, those laws are on the books, but not everywhere. And we have to get to the, to the real point, which is that gun enthusiasts fight those laws wherever they can. Attorneys who uh, represent the gun rights movement over the gun safety movement, attack those laws, prevent those laws from taking place. Because there's usually an ulterior motive. I mean, in, well, back in the 34. Well, don't talk to me about my ulterior motive. Our motive is to keep our children safe, our family safe, our community safe. I mean, they're safe. not out to destroy. <laughs> well, you well, know, we evil. have gun yeah. owners uh, on our not, board of Gun directors. control people well, aren't evil well, people. <laughs> and, and, and God bless her if that's true. But you know what? Back in uh, 2000, the head of handgun control in Los Angeles said, you know, we've gotten everything pa passed in California that we need to get passed. We really don't have anything else to do. I don't know what we're going to push next year. The next year he was out, a new guy was in, and there was a whole new agenda and a whole new slate of gun control laws to pass. That's the way it goes. We'll have more with our panel after this. We're back with our panel, our remaining moments. Chuck, to the Unload Your 401k initiative has emerged. Chuck, will this have a significant effect on the gun industry? I doubt it. I mean, people are certainly welcome to vote with their feet on any corporation that they don't like, but gun companies are doing very well. President Obama is the gun salesman of the, of the decade. Uh, his laws have caused people to go out and buy guns in record numbers. How so? Well, because when you threaten to ban a gun, that causes a rush on those guns. And so we've had a tremendous uh, gun. There's more guns being sold in California and in the country for the last few years than there's ever been before. There's been a huge increase in demand. So those gun companies are making money. But remember, they make in a year what the tobacco industry makes in a day. This is not that gigantic. What do you, how do you feel about assault weapons? Tell me what one is. In California, that term is manufactured. It's a legal term of art that they can change the definition on. And a couple of years ago, they were ready to change that definition to cover any semi-automatic firearm. It would have, would have banned like 70% of the rifles out there. That's the, the devil in the details of those bills. It didn't is, work federally, and it doesn't work in California. Adam, is there a legal definition of an assault weapon? Well, there are, uh, all the laws that define assault weapons have a legal definition. It's usually defined as a semi-automatic weapon, usually a rifle, that has one or more military-style characteristics, such as a folding buttstock or uh, maybe a bayonet lug, uh, a variety of different features that have been used. Um, but uh, there are such things as uh, assault weapons in the sense that there are weapons that are legally defined to fit that term. Um, they're not generally used in criminal activity. They are, have been used in some high-profile mass murders. Uh, however, just as a matter of the, the data, um, there are fewer than 300 rifle deaths uh, every year. Uh, only a fraction of those would be from assault rifles. So the major problem with guns in America is certainly not the assault rifle. Uh, it's obviously the handgun, which does most of the damage that uh, is done by guns. And the Supreme Court has said that handguns are constitutionally protected. Is this a Democrat versus Republican issue? No, I don't think so. I don't think so. When you I look so? at my board of directors, 
we have Republicans, we have Democrats, we have gun owners, we have people who don't own guns. You think it's a political left uh, it, versus it, it's, right? It's, it's, it's certainly cultural. Whether it's left versus right, uh, there is a cultural d debate going on in this country right now, and I think the Second Amendment is sort of the tip of the spear in that debate. Uh, there's On the one side, you have people who sort of believe in the freedoms and the right to choose to own a gun to defend, them, their sons or fam to defend themselves or their families. On the other side, I think you have a group of people who would like the government to be filled with people who think like them and then have the government tell people how to live. And, and that's something that I think has rallied people to the NRA. That's why there's five million members now, up a million since uh, the attacks ban and, the, and the, the attempts to demonize gun owners began after Sandy Hook. After that so tragedy, after Sandy people Hook, People go out and buy guns. That sounds yeah, funny. And join the NRA, yes. To, 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 because there, there became a huge pushback. Uh, uh, Mayor Bloomberg and a number of other uh, progressive foundations started pushing lots of money. And those are individuals, wealthy individuals, advancing their idea of what the social agenda should be. They have a right to do that. Well, sort of, of course. yes. And, but five million members of the NRA recognized that and decided they wanted to send in their 35 bucks and push back against it. So you tell me who the special interest is. Margo? Really? <laughs> who is the special interest? Well, it's certainly the marketing firm for the uh, gun manufacturers, and that would be the NRA. I think it's very clear. I also want to say that there are more guns in the United States, but they're in the hands of fewer people. And so I think we can look for a big, and already see, a big push by the marketing arm of the gun manufacturers to reach new markets in the United States. So Adam? they're reaching women and children. What do you think about that, Adam? Well, I think Margo is right that the number of people who own guns as a percentage of the population has been in steady decline for about 50 years and is going to continue to drop. We see more guns purchased, but by fewer and fewer people. It means that the gun owners today are likely to have two, three, four guns in their closets uh, rather than just one. And I think that will have a big effect on the gun debate over time, especially as new immigrant groups like uh, Hispanics. We heard after the last election that the Republican Party wanted to uh, do more to reach out to a changing demographic. Well, the changing demographic is generally against gun control. Minority groups are the biggest uh, supporters of gun control. Sorry, I said against gun control. I meant against gun rights. Minority groups are the biggest supporters of gun control. So we're likely to see more support for gun control in the next 20 years than we do Does today. Does that worry you, Chuck? Uh, there's some education that needs to be done, but I also know that the, the younger groups, the millennials, know they're tilting libertarian, and libertarian philosophy is definitely in favor of the right to be able to choose to own a gun, defend your family. Thank you all for a fascinating discussion. Thank, Thank you very much. A big thanks to my guest, Margot Bennett of Women Against Gun Violence, Firearms Attorney C.D. Chuck Michelle, and UCLA Law Professor Adam Winkler for discussing a very important topic. Follow me on Twitter at King's Things, and I'll see you next time.